Are you trying to set up Storybook for a React Native project? This video will guide you through all the steps that are required for a successful installation. Let's begin. So we want to start by running the main Storybook command. This command will basically install all the basic Storybook packages and also generate the Storybook folder and entry point for our application. Let's go ahead and run the command. Excellent. So we can now take a look at what has been created for us. I'm going to briefly go over all of these uh, newly created files. First of all, we've got the index.js. Because we're using TypeScript, we are going to quickly change this to a TSX file. On our main.js, we can include all the storybook add-ons that we want to use, as well as all the specific paths to our stories. In fact, in a standard project, all your stories will live inside of a component folder in your SRC. So what we can go ahead and do is uh, create it right now. So source components, and we can drag the example button component and drag it into our components folder. Let's move it. We can now delete the empty stories folder. And what we want to do here is simply update our path source components and then find any story that lives inside of components regardless of the depth of the directory which ends with ds tsx js on jsx all right let's keep that a bit of a save uh we then have preview.js which basically handles the display of storybook and then we have storybook.requires which is an automatically generated file it is in fact automatic because we still have our uh, previous stories folder. We don't want to edit this manually. What we want to do instead is go over to our terminal and run the command storybook-generate. And navigate back to our project. And as you can see, it updated the folder for us. And it also included the import for our button right here. Right, there's still a few things that we need to do. But before anything else, I'd like to add more add-ons that will be useful down the road. But let's go to our terminal and copy this command, which will be down in the description as well. This will install notes and background on device add-ons. And we want to install it with dash T, which basically will be a dev dependency. That's done. All we need to do in our project is to go on main.js and add these two lines followed by a comma. If you are interested in learning more about what each add-ons that we've installed is used for, I'll leave a snapshot in the screen, so feel free to pause the video. Now, how do we actually run Storybook? Well, the standard way would be to you export Storybook instead of our app.tsx at the root level, and this is suggested by the documentation. The problem with that is that every time you wanna run Storybook or your application, you will have to manually change the entry point at the root level. And who the hell wants to do that? So it turns out there is a better approach. If you have a bare React Native project, I'd suggest adding a variable to your .env file and then export storybook at the root level instead of your application if that variable is true. If you have Expo, we can modify the entry point on the fly. What we're gonna basically do is set environment variables at build time and then have Expo consume them and give them to us at runtime. This is how we do it. Let's go to our packet.json and we can start by creating new scripts for launching Storybook instead of our application. So let's go ahead and copy these three commands. What well, we're gonna call them instead of what they are right now is Storybook start Android and iOS. And we're also gonna add the environment variable that we wanna set. This is just gonna be storybook equals one or true. This variable right here will be read by both Expo and also Metro at build time. But what we now need to do is create an app.config.ts to read and consume this variable. So let's create a file called app.config.ts let's import 
the necessary types. And let's go ahead and return the config. Now, TypeScript will complain because basic app configuration requires at least a mandatory name and a mandatory slug fields. To fix this, we need to bring in all the values from our existing app.json. So let's copy all of this. And let's combine it with the existing configs. And be deleted. Excellent. Delete that one. Okay, so app.config.ts is always prioritized over app.json. So we can, we can just delete this file. And all the configurations that we need are going to be here instead. And you might be wondering, so what has changed? Well, nothing has changed except the fact that we now don't have a JSON file. Instead, we can consume our storybook variable in the extras. So let's go ahead and name this storybook enable. And this will be process.amp.storybook. And we're just going to check if it's going to return one. So this will be set as a true false value. And what is left to do now is simply read this newly created expo constant in our app.tsx entry point. So let's navigate to our app.tsx, add the following imports, which is constant and storybook. Let's remove the export default and instead move it at the bottom. And here we want to check that constants dot expo config dot extra dot storybook enabled is true and if that is true then we want to return the storybook otherwise we want to return our application so that's most of the setup done we just have one more thing to do before wrapping up and testing both applications so storybook uses sb modern resolver to resolve packages and this is in order to remove polyfills that are shipped with common js modules so to finish the setup, it is required that we add SP Modern to our Metro server, and it's quite easy. All we need to do is start by creating a new Metro config. We can do this through our terminal and just pass this command. All right, let's go back to our project. So Metro is also bundled at build time, which means we can read our storybook environment variable and dynamically add SP modern resolver to the existing array. So let's again check that uh, environment is set to one or true. And let's then unshift SP modern as the first of the resolvers array. Give that a save. And that's it. We can now test running both apps, starting from our normal application. Let's go to our terminal and just call start. Wonderful. So this one's our application. Let's kill the process now and instead run our new storybook column start command. Close this one. And that's storybook for us. We got our example button and tap on it. We can check the touch event. Awesome. Thanks so much for making it through the entire video. If you got any questions, leave them down below. Bye bye.